Okay. <laughs> I usually wear gloves, and then people, I guess, oh, who's saying this? Oh, that means we're rolling. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> two one oh, hey guys, this is Natasha with Latina Two Ten Podcast. Thank you to Vodpa Media for housing and producing, and to Latina Podcast Network for having you in your network. Guys, if you're watching, go listen. If you're listening, go watch. No matter what, like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Help support your girl and my guest as well. So I, I, I say this every time, but you're gonna want to see who I have. So go to YouTube, subscribe, and then see who I have. Um, please introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Serena Volsi. I am the owner of Taco Couture, where we specialize in making luxury boutique tacos. Okay, so I have to know, like, where, which sounds, it's a mouthful. I know. Number one, your tacos are, please don't at me and don't cancel me, but they're <laughs> some of the best that I've ever had. Thank you. I can tell that a lot of love and time goes into that. And not only that, but because I follow you, I see that a lot yeah. of love and time goes into that. Yeah. So what made you want to start this business? <clears throat> this is a long story. Yeah. I've always tried to like condense. Yeah. But I feel like people need to know. We have an hour, girl. You yeah, know. okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I was going, I guess we can go to like college. When I got into college, right, I was like, what do I want to do? And I really loved art. So I was going to school for interior design. So like art was my thing. Met my husband, uh, we did a bunch of traveling, he joined the military, so we held off on having kids, so we used to splurge on ourselves, um, fine dining. So we were paying like crazy amount of money, like in <laughs> DC, you know, we, I mean, thanks to the military, we were able to like move around and see a lot of different experiences, but when it came to fine dining, we definitely were paying a lot of money for art. Yeah. Um, the I mean I don't know if any of y'all or some of y'all have seen my husband behind the cart, but he's six four. So um, after eating the art that <laughs> I loved, and I would kid you not always take out my phone, do yeah. the video recording, the pictures, and my husband like hated that. He's yeah. like, "Are you done?" <laughs> and um, so that kind of goes to like Taco Couture. I want you to take out your phone, do the pictures, do the before you eat it. But mm -hmm. going back. Um, paying all that money just to go home or back to our hotel or whatnot for us to Uber uh, or Uber Eats or go out to eat um, street food, which is like pizza or tacos. <laughs> because, yeah, you paid a lot of money. It was it was pretty. It was artistic. It was me showing family, friends, like what I'm eating. Da -da -da. Yeah. We've gone to Nobu and like the lobster tacos. My husband, you had to order two, minimum two. They mm -hmm. were 20 bucks each. And well, my husband, I have a picture. It's so bad when I show everybody <laughs> like literally it was the size of his thumb what yeah so he was like I spent $40 on two thumb tacos <laughs> did they at Nobu like accidentally give you crawfish instead of lobster no that was lobster because I, I mean how was lobster that little I guess that like the way they dice it up to present mm. it to look pretty and mm -hmm. it's like a vibe eating small things and like, no, it's not. not for my husband <laughs> <laughs> not for me or either. not for a texas girl yeah. right <laughs> yeah and i was like yo this is a joke um but anyways you know pizza tacos was like the latest thing that would be open so um fast forward to 2021 decide to start planning our family after being with him for eight years and married and so i was like all right um that meant if i was going to do this that we had to move back home because uh, I was no way able to raise a child without family support. Um, yeah. So we came back to San Antonio. Well, home for me is the Valley, Valley Girl, nine RGV, 956. <laughs> but we came back to San Antonio and I realized that niche was missing in San Antonio. I, I mean, I don't know if a lot of y'all have heard, but San Antonio is always like behind on mm. trends on food music all of that you know compared to what i've experienced mm -hmm. um so i was like all right well i mean being from a valley being a valley girl the food down there does not compare to texas san Ooh, antonio i'm shots sorry fired. shots I'm fired i'm sorry it's like, <laughs> like you know they say it's very tex-mex here which is which it is and it's not like oh yeah. my god but being raised on like authentic and what do they call it like poor people food like fideo yeah. and, and it, but down there it was like right it was yeah. good um so i'm like all right well i know the flavors missing here and i know i've experienced this expensive plated food like 
what can I do? And then also background into your design. So my mind, you know, just started going, going, well, what really, I'm sorry, I'm going all over the place, but what really started that was, um, came back, had baby girl in October, 2021. And thinking it was going to be all good and dandy, you know, like, I don't know, I thought it was going to be smooth. I mean, I was like 28, you know, husband was, well, he got out of the military active duty and then he joined the guard Mm -hmm. so that we can, because they cut us off of um, TRICARE. So like right off of TRICARE. So I was seven months pregnant, moved back, didn't see a doctor till two weeks before I gave birth. That's crazy. Because literally they cut us off and he joined the guard to try to like activate it again by the time they did it was two weeks before and then at that time no doctor wanted me because I was too far along um they didn't it was uh too like a risk Mm -hmm. you know were you did you have a high-risk pregnancy Mm -mm. no no and then finally I got an OB that she used to be a military wife so she's like I get it like girl and then so like two weeks later gave birth Oh. All natural, because, like, in my mind, I'm very much so like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, like, strong, and my mind was, like, if my grandma was able to do eight kids on the ranch and still get up, like, that woman empowerment thing, yes. I was like, uh-uh. Like, I mean, I hate to say this, but, because I'm very against gender roles, but I, God made us to bear children. Yeah. So, in my mind, I was like, well, I was still at the hospital, but I was like, nope, no, it hurt. Nothing will ever, ever, ever beat that pain. Period. But, <laughs> um... Yeah, after having her naturally, I felt like I felt like I evolved, evolved right then and there to this like mega woman. I don't know. <laughs> like Honestly, it was insane. I was so traumatized yeah. that I didn't even like know what was going on in the room. Like the whole like umbilical, umbilical cord uh-huh. cutting. I was like, I mean, I was there, but I wasn't there. I was still trying to get over what the fuck just happened. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, having her, you know, and then <clears throat> my husband gets activated uh, for the border crisis, what's happening down there. Mm-hmm. When she when I a week after I had given birth and he had told them, hey, like we just had a child and they're like, OK. And I don't know. I just feel like they the way they said it was they're like, OK, what's well, tell your wife to go get um you know a letter saying that they need you there for mental health or whatever and i was just like dang okay which was true but i don't want to admit that you know especially if it's going to be written on paper so we did that you know i needed him there for you know mental and i couldn't drive myself to like appointments and stuff so we thought it would work we were like okay we'll reach back out in six months and then literally six months like they were timing it down and they activated him they're like there's no way backing out this time so he left when she was six months and came back when she was 14 months. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's such a long time. Yeah. And my first baby. Um, I mean, he was in Zapata, which is like three hours away. Yeah. He's got to come home one weekend out of the month. Mm-hmm. But it's just like every time he came, he was doing things that we would do when she was like a newborn. And I, like, I could only imagine like for him like he's missing out on so much i'm like yo we're past that (laughs) like no more bottle like stop or she's eating solids and it's just like for him too like he was like "Mm, this is happening a lot (laughs) yeah like so much faster and then for me it was ah like i've always been like on the go like independent like don't tell me nothing like i never (laughs) really imagined myself to be a mom like if it wasn't for my husband i would have never had kids because like in my mind i was like that's a setback sorry but i'm like yeah i feel like it's a setback like uh i felt like the path and how driven i was and i was like i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep going i I knew and that's why i held off so long and then i just didn't know like the mental that would come with it like oh my god it was like needy like crying and then i was breastfeeding and you know i wasn't fully lactating like it was giving her what i could and then you know finishing and that made me also made me feel like maybe i'm not meant to be a mom because if i was meant to be a mom i would lactate mm. and da, da, da. And then i mean it sucks to say i'll probably like cry because like i look at her now and i love her so much and like she goes to daycare and i'm like oh my god i want to go get her but i feel so guilty because i didn't have a connection with her when she was a newborn up until 
Taco Couture. Like I say, Taco Couture has saved my life because um, mm, <laughs> it's happening because I was such in a dark space. And I felt like now I feel like like she didn't deserve that. Like I don't remember times I had with her when she was like a baby. To me, it was just like, wake up, hear her cry and like feed her and then go to sleep. Like I wasn't mentally okay. Yeah. And then I thought like maybe I'm not meant to be a mom. And so like suicidal thoughts would come in, but I don't know. It was really, really hard. And then I was like, well, what's going to make me, I don't know. Like, I think the jump for Taco Couture was like, think of your passions, right? Like I'm a foodie. I like art. I love color. And so I started thinking about like taco cart. And I was like, there's no taco cart out here. There's nothing but taco trucks. And then people still call me taco truck. And I'm not. <laughs> They're like, hey, we're inquiring about your taco truck. And I'm like, first of all, it's a cart. Yeah. <laughs> Don't disrespect me. But um, no. So all those thoughts made me feel more alive. And then it kept rolling into a ball. Sorry, I keep touching this. Um, no, you're good. And then it created what. You know, I thought about the carpet, the ropes. We have a 10-foot pink carpet, a, ten, um, a floral cart, and then the neon sign. Like, everything's about details because yeah. I could have gotten, like, vinyl. Sure. Or I could have gotten, like, I don't know, literally just vinyl, like, at Taco Couture or whatever. But it wasn't the full experience. Yeah. So I wanted to provide the experience just like we got experience in fine dining restaurants. And I wanted to still provide and pay homage to how I was raised which is well I'm a valley girl but I was raised in Reynosa mm -hmm. and so I don't know if some of y'all follow me but every time we go down to Mexico I make sure that I get some BTS there yeah. and show like the cart life is really real For it's sure. the hustle it's how they eat um good food i mean i the last time i went we saw like a kid I, he couldn't have been older than 12 and he was doing like the papa fritas mm -hmm. like on his little cart and i'm like there's no excuse and that's just the way i was raised though um compared to like you know being handed a, a <laughs> lot of stuff yeah like i didn't come from a family of wealth or any of that it's just like like, oh, well, during my depression, you know, like, I'll talk to my mom, like, hey, and I'd be like, I'm not gonna tell her, but I was like, no, I'll tell her. I'll tell my mom, because, you know, she was living in the house with us, and I was like, mom, I'm experiencing this, and she's like, get over it, like, <laughs> there's women in Mexico that are thrown on the side of the floor, like, asking, and it's right, it, she's right, so, like, that will, like, make me humble myself, but it, it would also yeah and you know what they say about like hispanic or other traditional families yeah it's like so that is right however that doesn't take away from what you're feeling and that doesn't invalidate your your feelings and your emotions and what you're going through right and my mom was the same way because we talked about this when i met you mm -hmm. uh, was that i had postpartum depression as well with my daughter um i almost died having her and so and i did it naturally too and I was like, yeah, no, let's do this. Like, yeah, uh, you know, I got this. It, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm super strong. And and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, but because she was ripped away from me because I was actively dying, yeah. um, which is, sounds super dramatic, but it literally was. Um, that's the closest I've gotten, I think, to death. But um, having that just intense drop in hormones and then with the situation how it happened and it happens even without that situation right um i went into the worst depression i've ever had in my life so the suicidal thoughts were daily multiple yeah. times a day um trying to think of ways to do it that would look like an accident because i didn't want to shame my other children or like my family right so also struggling with that and then anxiety too on top of that mm -hmm. and panic attacks and having to go back to work after three months and being a nurse and going back to working in the ICU, having patients that were, you know, also dying, some of them. And so all of that was just yeah. the worst time of my life. And my mom did the same thing. I mean, how you just need sleep. You're just tired. You're just, you know, she's a baby yeah. and like. It was a lot of invalidating, and I think that's unfortunately a like a Latino thing, 
or like Latina thing, like or Latina, however, right? It's a thing. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a problem. So I think as for us as mothers now and mothers that have daughters, like when it's their time, hopefully that does not happen to them. Right. But if it does, we'll be more understanding and more supportive. Yeah. Well, I find myself well now she's two now and she's the sassiest boss. <laughs> like everyone's like she's super smart and i'm like yeah i'm like y'all are just saying that but like every like daycare at the gym daycare at daycare they're like yo she's like super advanced and i'm like i mean i don't want to be like well duh because that's <laughs> how my mom was you know like i'd purposely get a honor roll or do the mm-hmm. national society on purpose because my mom didn't have custody of us mm. um that's like another sore subject which is my childhood which isn't that great but i would purposely do things academically or physical because i would be in sports a lot mm-hmm. um a majority of being in sports was to not go home to my dad and my stepmom but it was more so to like a cry out to be like come support me like hey they're having a word ceremony and you know every i mean everyone i went to school with their parents would show up and like none of my parents would like my dad would well my dad would be at work and then my mom was like okay like you're my daughter like i expect nothing less. like for her it was like duh like mm. you're smart like what are you talking about same thing with like my brothers like so i find myself now and i'd be catching myself because i'm like st- having that strong like duh like yeah she's smart (laughs) yeah or with her i'm like pick it up but the way i say it is more i just find like i feel like i'm becoming my mother and so right now in my motherhood journey um i mean even an entrepreneur which is really hard with how fast the business took off like i do feel like i'm failing still because i wanted to do something to get my mind off of it and now that i have it I still can't fulfill being a mother because it's like, I got to send this invoice. I got to talk to da, 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 I got to prep. I got to order. I got to talk to my vendors. And then when it's baby girl time and it's just like, uh, like get it together. You I have nothing know. left. Uh, yeah. And like my husband's home now, but it's like, uh, like, come on. I like the other day. I feel like I offended him because I was like, man, I need you to pull your weight. <laughs> Cause he was gone, um, for his job for three days and he came back and he was just like on the couch and i'm like yo you've been gone for three days i was take. i felt like i it was back to when he wasn't around mm-hmm. i'm like bro. like you would I, mean, I don't know i mean men and women are different like i women would be like well i was gone for three days let me take over like men are just like oh well if you need me holla and i'm like oh my god Assume like i don't that have I need to you. tell you yeah, like yeah. you see like i yeah. would just whatever that's just marriage guys I'm, I'm just kidding do it don't do it but i, I, say, yeah, all I say all the time <laughs> but then i feel like i offend him but i was like no yeah. you know we've grown so much together yeah so when we were like babies yeah um we'll be on 11 years in december so it's like whoa so now it's like ah so anyways business baby wife mom still and then the other day i was i'm super blunt and i can't hold shit back but i feel like i was falling back into a depression Mm. um a lot has to do with like a physical appearance and like i go to the gym basically every day but even at the gym now i can't focus because i'm on my phone and that's when i create i create the reels that you see or photos like i edit them and then like okay i do all that da, 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 and then i come into the captions and i'm like oh my god what do i write yeah so it takes me hours and i'll be in the sauna and then my phone overheats and then i have to go same girl oh and so god. like i'm on the treadmill and then i so like that muscle mine yeah. is gone i'll do the pre-workout and i so my background i was playing um basketball i actually came to san antonio to play for vista um nice to play basketball so like that was like my true passion growing up i was a super and i am still a super tomboy like everybody's like oh you dress yourself so and i'm like yeah when i go out but like at home i'll be like in like not sweats but like leggings and a yeah sorry uh like a basketball tee and i just that's how i work out like that's just me all the time but when i go out where i'm going to be shown now that people are like you're taco couture and i'm like yeah, like, shit. <laughs> I didn't put my lashes on, yeah. girl. Like, no, that's not me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it's such a dramatic difference where I don't think really people would really recognize or whatever. And yeah. plus the area that I stay at, like, no I really love does. that you brought up 
the like triple tasking because people don't realize what it's like to to be an entrepreneur like I hate when people are like oh it must be nice you get to like wake up whenever you want go to sleep whenever you want do whatever you want and I'm like understand yes right but also that freedom is all I've ever wanted in my life so but I'm working my ass off and like what y'all don't see is my phone overheating in the sauna because I'm trying to create content and work out. And I've, and gotten, be like, I've gotten so yeah. many like <clears throat> positive, like in person through message DMs, like, yeah. oh my God, who does your social media? Can yeah, I get me. them? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I do. And I yeah. cry every time because I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. So although I know there's like a certain event that I have to do, I don't, please still book with us, but yes. just know that I'm a perfectionist. So know that your event will be perfect. It's just same thing in college I could never write a paper or I could never do a project mm-hmm. if you give me like okay you have two months all right cool but I'm not gonna do it till the night before exactly and pull an all-nighter so in college when I was taking all the arts like I was in sculptures I took sculpture one two and three and then he was the same professor but in two uh sculpture two he was like he, he was like hey y'all have this is y'all's final two months and, uh, and we I knew about it I never did anything and then the day before I was like yo and I was working at Alamo Draft House on Marbot and I was working at SeaWorld at the same time Dang. and going to school full-time yeah. and playing basketball like for me the hustle that grind mm-hmm. is so addicting and like it's not about the money like people you know other entrepreneurs like oh my god like you're always getting booked but it's like it's not about the money it's a it's about the hustle that shit is real addicting it's Mm -hmm. like to me it takes my mind back to like mexico like they come out here every day and they still go home with nothing to eat like Mm -hmm. it's the hustle so um that that final project at draft house i was like looking around i was like what can i use because sculpture you could do anything with anything chicken wire paper whatever so i was like uh okay those tortilla chip boxes have like a grease stain i'm sure they'll let me take it so i took the box home with grease stains and i had hot glue and i was like okay create 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 and i created something like this big 3d dimensional thing and i turned it in and he was like blown away because like we'll critique everybody yeah. and he'll kind of like put everybody's on black he's like good but it wasn't on like the theme and then he'll come to mind he's like oh my god like i want to submit your stuff into like the student and yeah i didn't get a emotion or any type of connection with any of my work that i did in college So, and I regret that because I would love to keep that for an archive to show my daughter or to just have an archive of myself in general, like Kim Kardashian kind of vibe. (laughs) Uh, But I just didn't gain that connection with my pieces where Mm -hmm. I'm like, you can have it. It's chips. (laughs) Like it's box chips, but he was the way he was telling me that you know what i should because i would rip the side panels to show like the rigid under yeah. oh, like yeah, yeah. basically showing the true culture of cardboard box cardboard making like the interior which yeah. is that rigid stuff and he loved that although like, you could have it but now i regret it um but things like that like procrastination is how i work and you know i'll talk to certain people or like even my personal family or they'll be like "Mm, you need you need like a task a to-do list and and i'm like stop telling me that that makes me not want to do it more and i've talked to other entrepreneurs where they're like really like i love what you do and then when i get a little personal and close to them and i share they're like oh my god let's do like co-working and no offense to none of that it's just not how i work Mm -hmm. it's not my brain my brain is chaotic Mm -hmm. i feel as i don't know if you've heard that term like artists they're like just uh, my mom calls me a creative a tortured genius Mm. Uh, i don't know why she calls me that but when it comes to art like it's all over the place like you're not perfect you're not you're not it's just i don't know it's just how i operate i've tried to do the core working co-working i've tried to go to like coffee shops to work that's probably the most i can do like when it comes to laptop but every event never fails like i'm like dang why didn't i do this right and it just bothers me but having yeah. a checkoff list i know i should have it and i'm gonna work on it but um it's just how i 
how I am, who I am, um, when it comes to creating. So I literally feel like we're the same person. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, like want to create? Uh, goes yeah. to your garage and the, he's like, what did y'all do? Yeah, no, literally, because <laughs> I, same thing. Like, I will procrastinate so hard. And then, like, for papers or whatever, I'd be like, nobody talk to me. Yeah. And I would lock myself in yeah. a room and I'd be like, like, knock well, it out. Well, because if you do it ahead of time, then you're like, this ain't right. And so yes. the whole two months or week, whatever that you have, you're always messing with it. And yeah. then you end up looking at the final product and you're like, this sucks. Yeah. And then it beats you up. But when it's your perfect, right, towards your procrastinator, you turn it in, you're like, well, whatever, whatever. Yes. At least it makes me feel better if I get, like, a B and I'll be like, well, I mean, I just did it in four hours compared to a homeboy that got an A <laughs> and did it for two months. Yeah. It's the same thing for me. And same thing with my food. I don't know if a lot of you know. I don't know why I'm super dry mouth. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, a lot of you know I am vegan, so I don't eat meat. And so people. Which are, is wild to me. Yeah. And people are like, how do you? And I'm like, don't ask me. It's all about. <laughs> so my dad has taught me that technique, which is looking for the right textures um, when it comes to meat on the grill, right? I, I don't have, like, an actual barbecue grill, but, like, same thing, like, the char to when you're marinating, like, all I all that I learned through him and in Mexico, just the way, very ranchero style, like, we'll, the marinade is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, my taste testers is always the person that's working with me, which is usually my husband, um, or uh, my brother, so I'm like, yo, can you taste it? Because it looks salty. How do you know? Because I could tell by this, the seasoning layers. They're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, okay, good. Because, like, I'll freak out. But um, tamales, ta too, like, I cannot eat my own tamales. Crazy. And, uh, yeah, I make, like, a vegan one, like, which could be um, the frijoles, which mm -hmm. I haven't really released that, but I know there's rajas, the jalapeno rajas with cream cheese. Mm-hmm. I just can't eat my own stuff. It's so weird um, because if I do, I'm like, oh, it needs this and that. And I'm like, I'm just a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, no, nah, these aren't good. And the people are like, these are really good tamales. I was like, no, I think it's missing if I taste it. And I'm like, I'd just rather not. And then you overdo it instead of just like, it is what it is. And in my mind, good. like, I could verbally say, and people are like, oh my God, get over yourself. But in my mind, like, I feel like my mind's like a pump. Like, it'll just explode because I'm like bothered by it. That yeah. It tastes that the tamale it needs this. It's not the full, you know, um, full experience that I wanted to give. It's not my grandmother's hand. Like, yeah. I just go in on myself. So <coughs> I'm really hard on myself, but I'm also like, I'm not able to deliver if I'm not hard on myself, in, in my opinion. Yeah, that's just how I work. No, I I'm the same way. Like my friends, or like the people closest to me, are like, stop beating yourself up, and I'm like, no, but like it's not that. It's like unless it's perfect or damn near, yep. close, like then I am not okay with putting yeah. it out. And even then, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I should have done this. I should have yeah. done that. Why didn't I say this? Yeah. Why didn't I do that? And people are like, your your level <laughs> of like, okay, this is fine. Is people's like through yeah. the roof perfection yeah. and i'm like but i don't care about other people <laughs> I, know, right? I care about um, myself and like how what am i portraying because it's a business right because you never know who's gonna see it who's gonna be your next client if they're gonna come back to you why they're coming back to you and you want to make sure that everybody gets the same like perfection yep. right like and it's but it's hard because then you're like up well for me i'm sure you too i'm up till ungodly hours and yep. i'm like or i'm waking up like oh my god like yes. i forgot i've gone <laughs> yeah. i've woken up out of my sleep i'm like what is this person yes. event? and i'll yes. pull up the calendar i was like oh okay. yeah i was like i didn't order i didn't order the meat but like now it's it's my life now <laughs> yeah and well i know i was sharing i know i'm like i always go all over the place no, but it's like I'm very honest and, and vocal and blunt. That's like the personal me. So like there's certain people, not a lot, because I don't try to show that side of me because at the end of the day you are, I never knew or understood being the face of your brand until like maybe six months in mm -hmm. where people are like, you're and oh my God. And, and I'm like, what? No, I j the tacos is the brand. <laughs> but people want to see face. They want to mm -hmm. know culture they want to know tradition they want to know the backstory um so i'm like okay i guess and that's i started getting i started gaining a lot of more confidence with the business because of postpartum depression um my first event i was like 
I don't know if they're gonna like it do y'all like it and then I like I found myself asking like people like y'all like it and I was just like what if a business owner were to t- if someone was feeding me food and telling me that yeah I'm like why did I buy from you you know what I mean but to me it was also my way of getting out of that hermit crab hole that dark space so it was a way of me talking back talking to people a way of me just I don't know gaining confidence so every event that I do I gain so much confidence I walk with my head super high I'm like bitch I'm taco (laughs) Couture. reservation for two yeah (laughs) but no it's it's just I don't know I don't know it's it's crazy it's crazy that you know and and I do the dirty work like you Mm -hmm. know what I mean like they're like oh your husband and your brother and I'm like they don't marinate my meat. They don't do the salsa. They don't make any of the... F- they just help me unloading the car because it's heavy. And mm-hmm. I still haven't been able to invest into a company vehicle. But um, just loading it, putting it all together. And then, like, when I'm cooking, I'm like, I'll be sweating. Like, I'm certain events, like, basically, like, networking events. Like, I'll do... When it's time to serve, I'll, like, dress up to, like, tie in the whole yeah. experience, you know? Um, Which but, is also exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, girl, I just sweat. I smell like taco meat. Yeah. I got this suit on. Now I got to get a dry clean. Yeah. So, like, my mind works like that. Yes. Instead of, like, just put it on and you put a smile on your face and you serve. And it's like, ah. But, um, no, confidence has definitely helped me with taco couture. I feel not 100% back to normal. But going back to what I was going to say when I was super blunt and honest, I did find myself falling back into a depression hole recently. But... I can't back out because I have committed clients, committed bookings. I can't crawl back in that hole and disappear for like a month or two. Although I really want that. And I feel like at this point in my life or journey, I'm like, man, like I've been on go, go, go. Like I just kind of want to like go, go, go away. Um, And again, like that falls into like being a mom and a a wife. Like I really want to like go deeper into Mexico, stay out there for like three weeks and learn a different technique because the the estilo the style that we do is Mm -hmm. uh frontera which is you know like just i don't know how you how do you describe frontera like i don't know i would just say ranchero style but like deeper into mexico there's different like in oaxaca like Mm -hmm. different styles and food that i would love to learn under someone and bring that experience back but it's just like for me to even try to get away with committed bookings and then thinking about my you know daughter that I feel I would feel still guilty because I'm like yo I'm over here on a trip when I could have been taking three weeks off to hang out with her and you know so it's just like my mind is always like <sighs> like I feel like I could never reward myself yes with the business yeah I feel like maybe in my 10-year plan or five-year plan maybe that will time will come but I've just you know We're not robots, and sometimes I wish I was because then I wouldn't have, like, the emotional, like, even with, like, husband and wife Mm because I know he helps me out a lot. But uh, And I I hired someone recently, and that's been a great help, but it's also, like, having to train them from, like, square one Mm -hmm. compared to my husband. He already knows, like, da-da-da. So now that brings into manager management position. I know I need to learn this eventually if I want to franchise my carts or um, just have different teams working for me. But it's just like, oh, this is a whole other role, like managing and being a boss. And it's just like, uh, like I have to be careful how I represent myself around someone because I wouldn't want yes. them to be like, yo, she's the worst boss ever. Like she'd be eating and she'd be <laughs> cussing. Like, you know, I wouldn't want that for my yeah. business or my brand. So there's a lot of roles going on right now, and I'm, like, just super overwhelmed. But, you know, knocking out events, and like, like I said, every event, and like you said, you never know who you're, who, you know, is listening to you or talking to you or with your perfectionism. For me, like, these events that we do, yes, maybe we'll, I'll get to know my client a little bit more. I, mean, I, would, I don't know their social or anything, but they're like, hey, it's my party or it's my ground, da, da, da. But their guests, like, there's been some some guests and they're yeah. like yo this is unique my name is and i own and i'm like and they're like okay what's your 30 percent uh what's your 30 percent margin and i was like embarrassed because i was like sir i'm gonna be honest i don't know my shark tank speech but i don't know what that means yeah and he's like well what's your profit and i'm like i don't know what that means 
Well, it's none of your business <laughs> also, but yeah. Well, he was trying to help me more on like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like scaling it up. And I'm like, he was like, okay. And then I, he's like, do y'all have other stuff? Cause like I did his, um, daughter's event and they had like a really nice house. Now I starting to see our clients mm. go like upscale. When I first started this business, I wanted to, being where I'm from, I never experienced anything pretty. So I also wanted to do this business so that I could give, how do you say it? Like the hood, quote unquote, this experience. Yeah. Because you never know, maybe their kids or maybe them alone. Because I've met a lot of grown people. When we did our first pop-up, there was a guy and a, a, a couple and they had our tacos and they came and they're like yo and then he was like this is gold on steak and i was like yeah like you know like t- like the gold the 24k golden leaf steaks in the restaurant he's mm-hmm. like he's like mm, we don't go to restaurants like we go to like chains but like they'll profile he had tattoos all over his mm-hmm. face his hands like they won't let us in like i guess i don't know he didn't tell me what restaurant but like ever since that they've been discouraged to go to like fine dining yeah. and i'm like that Which you know sucks. yeah and yeah. i'm like well let's, i mean i got gold on steak like what's up and like and i know you'll like it like so giving back to my community that's when i started when i was doing pop-ups i wanted that but then it wasn't really bringing in guaranteed mm-hmm. money it was always a guess it was mm-hmm. always a question mark and then again my brand is fresh authentic so whatever meat that didn't get cooked got frozen and i'm not about to unfreeze or unthaw meat for a paying client so now i'm a catering only i try not to do very minimal Mm pop-ups now i charge to do pop-ups compared to before it's like oh pay your vendor fee 80 dollars because your food 150 because your food and i'm like all right all right all right and then i was a different name when i first started i don't know if you knew that Mm -mm. yeah i was uh i hate saying the word but the name because it's just well it was called bougie taco sa no, I didn't. And that was Bougie Taco SA. Two months in, got a message from some chick from California that does very something similar. Not a cart, but pink tortillas. And she basically accused me of doing infringement um, and said it was a long message. She, girl, she's been on um, Mario Lopez, Ryan, whatever his name is. She, her store is like in Beverly Hills. Like, yeah. You're like, we're different. <laughs> I, at the time, I had like 500 followers yeah. and two months into business. And I'm like, you, she's like, I'm all for Latina, but you need to like figure out your own brand and your own self. And is that her name too? No. So then what the fuck? She had the word bougie in her name though. And? And so she's like, send me your email so I could send you the documents and my dummy. And I was sent her my email and I didn't get nothing. So it was like a bluff in a general, in a sense. She wants you like a cease and desist. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you ever get to watch this that girl thank you because if you didn't i wouldn't become taco couture i wouldn't evolve to taco couture yeah because you know i was talking to lawyers about it i was like all right let me go talk to a lawyer and they're like they can't own the word pink no they can't own pink in general Mm -mm. they can't own the word bougie now we could fight it where it proves that you're not taking away california clients and i'm like beyond like i'm catering to texas residents like granted if i mean i know a lot of californians are moving to texas because of the whatever that's not my fault like right but i was like you know what it's fine he's like do you want to move forward i'm just going to tell you it's going to if you have the money like we could fight this and i'm like it's not worth it so i was at the gym it was like two days i cried one the first day and i was just like man i'm just out here trying to like i'm not a fraud am i a fraud and i was questioning myself and i told my husband he's like and they have like heart-shaped quesadillas well they called molitas but mm-hmm. i called mine quesadillas which are smaller and i was like should i change the shape and i was just like tripping for a whole week or that first day and then two day came and i was like all right what can i do what can i do day three i was at the gym and between a set i guess from all the adrenaline i was like taco couture i was like no taco couture and i just kept saying i was like does it flow <laughs> called my husband i was at the gym i was like what do you think about ta-? well it was tacos with the s uh-huh. and i was like no let's take off the s taco couture and then i went to my cousin and um he's in austin he's a he's my branding yeah so i was like hey here's here's the name uh what can you do and then i sat there with him and i just let him he has like this big old setup laptop screen 
and he played with it and he created the tc yeah and 30 Which I minutes love. in 30 yeah. minutes and i was like yo this is it and it's just like if it wasn't for that i wouldn't have been able to do that and become who i am so then i called trademarking did the trademark documents all of that which is worth it but it's very expensive mm-hmm. so i had to like work my way i called and i was like hey what's your and he was like oh and i'm like oh okay so let me work my way up there i got the money i trademark it and now like last week i got a phone call from the trademark um wherever they're at saying like okay now your your thing is in review because this is a lengthy process yes. like 13 to 16 months so yeah. now my time is coming up where i get to own taco couture and that's like very exciting um but um what was I saying with that? Yeah, it's just yeah, it's that didn't happen. When we have, well, doing uh, going back to like pop ups, like I charge now mm-hmm. instead of like there was um she's like a social so- social media girl that creates events every month for like trendy girls, and she's like, hey, um, we would love to have you, and our fee is a hundred dollars if you would like. And I I'm like I hate messages like that, and I'm like, well we pay uh we charge a 150 pop-up fee and she's like oh okay will we benefit off of any of your earnings and i'm like no like now i have so much confidence where that 150 they may never know and i'm not gonna about to write you a whole paragraph is not to basically but to basically you're using my images Mm -hmm. my logo that i paid all that money for trademarking Mm -hmm. my name or again like the car all to promote your event so that people could be like oh my god pink tacos i gotta go yeah or i gotta buy a ticket Mm -hmm. to get into this event like Mm, we're that's 150 before i was slowly increasing i was starting at 40 then i went to 80 and i think in the winter i was like 100 now i'm at 150 good like if you want us to pop up at your event so good as you should a lot of people don't know is guessing the people that you're gonna have because that has happened where they're like oh we're expecting 200 i'm like all right cool i'll prep for like 70 plates because i'm like all right i'll do the math and i'm like all right i'm happy with that number that we take home and I sold 20. So it's not that I don't want to do pop-ups. It's just from experiences. And it also bothers me because I feel like I take away people that do follow us that maybe could never afford our smallest pack catering package, right? And I feel horrible because I'm taking away their opportunity to just show up to a pop-up event and yeah. pay a $14, $15 plate of tacos yeah. and that's their that's them getting to experience taco couture mm-hmm. compared to like being invited to a party or whatever or even affording us for like so and so their kids birthday party or whatever so that does mess with me a lot too because i'm like wait i have to think about this like we still have to rent the u-haul mm-hmm. we still have to do the it's really the labor our hope our overhead is not that bad it's the labor right that goes into this so I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with <laughs> I think it's hard because it's like um, I'm in a similar situation with my businesses is like we have to remain competitive, obviously. Um, you are your own niche, um, which one of our businesses is, but um, we design and produce fiesta medals and mm-hmm. promotional items, marketing items, things like that for businesses. And that's what we're known for. We've been doing it for seven years. And I've been burnt out. I feel like I'm burnt out like at least once a week. But and that's with everything I have going on. But um, outside of that, people are like, well, you know, why am I paying? Because we're very um, upfront. So when you get your invoice, we have it broken down into line items. Mm -hmm. This is your unit price. This is the shipping. This is blah, blah, blah. We don't do like, oh, here's a lump sum here. We, We explain what's what. So you know exactly what you're getting and what you're paying for. And people complain, not many now, because now we're choosy with our clients. Um. But they used to complain, like, well, why is shipping so much? Like, well, you know, we explain whatever. And they're like, oh, and they're like, well, so-and-so says that their shipping is free. I'm like, no, it's not. They roll it into your price. And but same thing. My overhead is not high at all. It's the labor because people don't understand what it like, what goes into it. Like, you're not up at three, four, five in the morning talking to people, getting stuff done. Like, yeah. if you want to do that, please go yeah. ahead. But that's what we're doing for you. You know what I mean? And then we're providing you your goods. Yeah. So you're just paying us to do that. But then with our other business too, like we have employees and we have an office and we have company vehicles and we have all this stuff. So it's like when some guy's like, hey, uh, I got a flat tire. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Okay. Or like, oh, registration's up. And I'm like, 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not ready, but I feel like it just needs to happen. Because like, right. if you keep doubting, if you keep putting that on hold, then it'll never happen. So True. like, this little tidbit of me having an employee is like a good start. Yeah. I mean, she's a college student. She's told she was me, sweet. Yeah. She's only had one job. Yeah. And I'm like, man doesn't have any ser- anything in food service but then i think back like any experience in food service and i think back and about myself when you know just trying to find a job out here in san antonio when i had first moved here do you have any experience in food no okay uh we can't hire you mm-hmm. well how, where do you want me to get food right. experience if you don't try me like put me on or something but i try to step back and think about that with her yeah um which is i could where maybe you know when she turns 30 or whatever and she still is like what's your first food and well it's taco couture oh that's a unique name uh what's taco couture and then she can go on her spew of what we do so like same thing like people are like why don't you go to the culinary institute and get them or like the students because they're like looking for work or whatever and i'm like it could work word whatever because i know like at the cia they can they pair you with like new york miami like find like michelin maybe stars Mm -hmm. and if they look at their you know resume it's like what's taco couture and for me it's like it's free promo where they'll have to be like well that's like compared to like bill miller or like yeah yeah. uh company names or they'll be like well taco couture is and then that could buzz into new york miami la ears yeah you never know so i always see things now in a business move like i'll go to walmart or i'll go to a business or like even like when we go to like sea world like i used to work at sea world girl we, at the time i don't know how much the turkey legs are there now uh sea world was buying their turkey legs for 10 cents and we were <gasps> selling them for eight bucks uh so no i just spent 20 dollars on one turkey leg girl like last week so i don't know what <laughs> what pricing that was back in 20 12 so i don't know if it takes them 20 cents in the hell to buy that turkey leg, but things like that is on some boss move and For sure. at the end of the day people are gonna buy it because you can't bring food into the park mm-hmm. you're gonna be passing by and be like yo that looks really good and juicy and crisp and, uh, and mustard and mm-hmm. but, all right 20 bucks i'll buy the turkey leg but what i love is that you're already and you're a year in you're already noticing your worth yeah and that's one of the hardest things for me because I don't feel like, like, how do you put a price on? Because it's not just what you do. It's who you are. No. And for me, like, who I am as a person, she's expensive, right? Girl. But what I do, I have to remain competitive. Yeah. And so, like, even in the content creation world, people are like, what are your prices? And for the longest time, I've been doing this almost five years, I'd be like, nothing. I'm like, what do you mean nothing? Like, and so people are like, do you realize I had one girl, um, she's like well known in the community. And she was like, Natasha, do you realize like your network right now? And I was like, no, y'all are my friends. <laughs> and she's like, no, take a step back. Yeah. Realize the people you like fuck with, like these are people like you've worked yourself, like you worked yeah. your ass off to get to where you are, to be in the rooms you're in with the people you're with. But for me, I'm like, no, like we just have a relationship, like we're friends. But I had to take a step back and be like, you know what, you're right. So when I approach businesses or businesses approach me and they're like, well, how many followers do you have? Which I hate that. Stop doing that. Yeah. Um, Because it doesn't matter. Yeah, they just have these businesses in San Antonio. They pay for them. They pay for that shit. And I'm over here like, I work hard creating content that I want you to tap on and get to learn about me and my family and my culture when other people are buying that shit. Yes. So I tell people all the time, like, look, I don't have hundreds of thousands or thousands and thousands. Um. But the people I do have are people of quality that you're going to want them to see your stuff. Yes, ma'am. So you make that decision. You want somebody that has 30, 40, 50,000, but they bought them. Yeah. And there's two people seeing their stuff. That's up to you. It's real easy to sniff those out, too. And then I hate the the DMs I get. Oh, we have they hit me with their followers Mm -hmm. and that they could promote me on their page if Mm -hmm. I do their event. Mm -mm. You ain't going to fool me. Mm -mm. (laughs) Like uh okay all right but my mom after that uh the party the one year uh taco couture party my mom went home she's like you built your network and i was like what she's like i was like mom there is like it's very intimate you know not that many people she's like no you built your network and my mom's an educator so she teaches um special ed at palo alto so she's she's been a special ed teacher for like 30 plus years so 
She's very hard because she's not one of those soft. Like she's like, no, yeah. you you got to be hard on them because they'll take a they'll take advantage of you. But mm-hmm. she's always been like a independent in your head. Like get like if you fall, get up. Mm-hmm. If you cry, stop crying. Mm-hmm. Like so, that's who I was, am, and I'm trying to kind of low key break that now that I have a daughter. But I'm like. I'm like, man, this girl hit me up talking about infringement. Three days later, I got Taco Couture. Like, if it wasn't for her, I would have. I felt like I wasn't built enough. I wouldn't have been built to create that, to right. get back up on my feet that fast. But you're resilient. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. You're like, bet. And I was like, okay. Uh, well, at first, it was like, Fuck. Yeah, 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 of course. And I was like, a day? All right, cool. You could have your day. Yeah. Which is funny, because now that I know the Paella Fest is coming up, it was the day before the Paella Fest last year. So it was like... All right, cool. So at the Paella Fest, I was like eating Paella, and I was like, what? No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fake. And then, like, yeah. boom, next day, gym time, Monday, I was like, or whatever, and I was like, Taco Couture. And so, yeah, I just want to be able to bring that elevated experience in street food because people usually put on sweats. Hey, let's go get some tacos at the taco truck or whatever. All right, let me put some sweats on. Like, no, I want to do events where you dress up. Yeah. The first time that I ever saw my brand, my every my whole business come to life with with uh larissa when she did the wedding expo at the witty museum Mm -hmm. it was a wedding expo so people were dressed in gowns and suits and i took a step back to take a video and i look at the video well right then and there i saw it in real life and then every time i play that video i'm like it came to life there was gowns on my carpet there was tuxes heels i mean granted people that still book as will be backyard birthday parties which is all fine and all but yeah. you know they're willing to pay that price so that their kid or wife or mom is having that experience yeah. like i want to be the showstopper of your show of your party that you're hosting yeah so you don't have to cook you don't have to clean you don't have to step down break down that's all up to us all that dirty work that y'all and ho- like just focus on hosting and we got you so that's why that's another convenience that we provide mm-hmm. um, other than like and I, I say it all the time. I was like a purple cart can pop up the next day. Am I worried? Not really. No, I, you'll maybe you'll take my idea, but you'll never take the people that are working behind it. Well, they'll, they'll never be you. They'll never be me. I, they won't have maybe they'll have culture or tradition, but it'll never be my style of cooking, which mm-hmm. is very different it's funny talking about cooking um so i have three styles right my grandma she taught me patience and love and family my mom has taught me fast Mm. flavor what can i make with five dollars in 30 minutes because i got three kids i need to eat boom and she threw some bomb ass meals and then my dad taught me the grill he taught me how to marinate cook the meats he was the meat guy right yeah so and I, of course i was a tomboy and i'm like i don't want to be inside with the girls like i want to be outside so like <laughs> my grandma would be like so then i come here and i'm like what well, well, yes grandma is like oh we're cooking and i was like no we're not and i was very and i i'm so sorry grandma she's 91 now and i try to go be with her as much as i can because i was i talked back a lot when i was younger um really bad and i regret it so much because now i understand what they all three of them were trying well not really my dad i was just like dad what are you doing and i like it but um what they were really teaching me because to me i hate gender roles yes i like when we had a house in maryland i would do the grass i was like babe go inside and he's like okay because he's haitian so i don't know if you know about the haitian culture they're french spanish Mm -hmm. and black but they favor their French side. So he could debone a whole chicken with a fork and knife. And I'm over here like, I'm so Mexican star. Like we, the tortillas are plate and you have uh-huh. like meat in the hand, like yeah. in the backyard barbecue. Like yeah. what are utensils? Yeah. And they could debone and they're like prim and proper. And they're, you know, they speak French. He speaks four languages, which is Creole, French, English. And they know a little bit of Spanish. But um, why'd I go there? Why did I go to meat? <laughs> but, oh, going to my culture was um, ma- grandma. I was like, come here. And I was like, no. She's like, I know what you're trying to make me do. And she's like, 
no, you have to come make it. And I was like, no, Grandma, I want to be outside with my brothers and my cousins, yeah. which are boys, playing tag and getting all dirty. And she's like, no, you're not you're not meant to go outside. And I was like, no, I'm going to go outside. And she's like, no, you're not going outside. So we were just like fire like yeah. that. But my grandma was just so patient. And she's like, okay, learn. And so I'll purposely like burn rice when you have to fry it or I'll purposely have to burn bean, burn everything. That was my mission because I would think, okay, maybe she's not meant for the kitchen Yeah. <laughs> every day. She never gave up, and I'll keep burning and burning and burning. And then finally, I was like, all right, I'll learn. And now look at me. Like, now I'm using techniques and flavors from what I was so against. Yeah. Didn't want to be in a kitchen. And now I'm sharing family recipes and traditions to the city of San Antonio. I mean, we travel, so we've done Miami, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to do it again. They reached out for May nice. for this year because we did May last year and May this year and the miami trip was just to like see if the brand would do good out there because yeah. there's a lot of hispanics but they're not like mexicanos there's no spice like it's you know honduran salvadorian boricuas puerto rican which is like white rice black beans mm -hmm. platano mm -hmm. and i'm over here like where's the salsa like, yeah 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 there's no like it's okay but i'm like where's the spice like where's the 10 different spices you're yes. supposed to throw in yeah so and caribbean the caribbean culture i love the caribbean culture being married into the caribbean family mm -hmm. mm, my husband's cousin that was here like she has a culinary degree actually um and um i was like yo why don't you do like a haitian cart and well oh, i man. hate fusion food mm. i really do hate fusion food because if i'm gonna go try I want the full experience. Like, if yeah. I'm going to go eat Haitian food, I want Haitian food. Like, if I'm going to go, and I know, like, Asian and Mexican do a lot of fusion. Which is crazy to me. And I'm like, no, if I want Asian food, I'll go get Asian food. And if I want tacos, I'm, like, yeah. I think for me, it's just, like, same thing with cruise ships. Like, I don't want to go on a cruise. I want to go to wherever i know the cruise you get more bang for your buck with but you get like an hour or two to get off the boat to go like i want to like not become the people but i want to go try their food and learn yeah, cultures yeah. and talk immerse to yourself exactly yeah so like let me be um caribbean for a week and then yeah. i'll go home with like the boat stuff and i'm like i i mean i would i ever do it probably but i just feel like it's a waste of my money because yeah. i'm very i'm addicted and attracted to yeah. cultures so like like my husband like he's like i'm haitian i was like ooh, yeah. like <laughs> it's different yeah. and so like <laughs> you're not american yeah good yeah so, like i'm like all right what do y'all do yeah <laughs> like, so sharing culture because like it could be boring in the beginning when you're dating right it was like oh my family and this is our dish and this is what we eat and i was like what and then you could piggyback off of that and the haitian culture is very much so like the Mexican culture, which is about um, tradition, mm -hmm. family, and food. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, we speak each other's language, but not really. And their food is really good. And I yeah. know Caribbean food, for me, in my opinion, is really hard to eat here because I've had the real deal. Mm. And so coming here, I feel like if you're Caribbean and you're listening to this, take that move. Know that there is no competition against you because you'll be one of, a handful yeah of that are out here yeah and if you're a foodie like me and if you like indulging in culture and stuff like that you'll they'll go try you because i've tried this ones are here and it's just like i mean business smart they're doing it right yeah, yeah. but me you can't fool me and there's probably like a few in san antonio that you can't that that can't be fooled i don't know if that makes sense yeah, yeah. um because I'm like, no, I've had the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I've, I've had the real deal. Yeah. So. No, I'm, so I'm really similar into, like, like, other cultures are so intriguing. Yeah. And, like, I'm like, oh, tell me. Yes. Tell me about your life. Like, and tell me about doing? how you grew up. And tell me about, like, you know, the things you used to do. But I also love to travel. And I love to, like, go places. And same, like, I want to go to Europe. And, like, don't talk to me for, like, a month. Right. Like, I'm going to go do anything, everything. Yeah. Like, I just, I want to be a part of that. My dream trip um, is, like, Greece. Because I'm like. Yeah. You're such a town village people. And yes. I want to, me too. <laughs> Honestly, for me, it's like Spain. Like, it, yeah. that's like motherland. Yeah. And I've never been. And so I want to go. Another I just don't one. know if I'll ever come back. Yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> they'll, they'll just have to make pasta here. and it's over, girl. Yeah. But when I heard, like, you go and they give you, like, tapas mm. in a bottle of wine for $2. Like, <laughs> Uh, you're like, like at game like on. every place. Not $2 wine, girl. girl. And then you have to siesta. Like, you have to. 
like i'm sorry you're telling me to take a nap sorry like or yeah. relax which i don't really do yeah. but like i'm sure i could yeah get used to it yeah. i don't know but yeah because we're always go 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 mm-hmm. go and like that's our level of success here at least in the united states yeah. but we also have the highest level of burnout and depression and anxiety and i'm like yes yes and yes Because everything so. that requires for a reset requires money and it's just like true i gotta hustle to make this money Mm -hmm. so i can please myself and then it just goes back into a circle yep so it's like it's so hard to enjoy myself knowing that i have to work all right let me work five events to cover this 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 and that just Mm -hmm. so i could be enjoying myself and i'll be like and then i'll beat myself up like i could have done that five events i could have saved that money because like i say i'm very frugal Mm -hmm. and stingy like business money is business money like Mm -hmm. i rarely do like the business meals or any of that i'm like yo i'm really trying to get myself a company vehicle or like i got my second cart like when i had first reached out to my whack my uh food wax paper guy i was like hey how much and he's like oh 780 for ten thousand papers and i was like that that was their smallest i was like can you go lower on quantity because i'm never gonna feed ten thousand people he's like no all right Took me like three months of doing like pop ups, and then I'm like, hey, I got my 780. And then he sent me uh, the box and he like off printed, offset printed. <gasps> uh. And I was like, I took a picture and I sent it to him. I was like, yo, and he's like, oh, my bad. I, I, let me send it to you again. And I was like, do you want this back? And I'm over here like super dumb, right? Like yeah. with Amazon. I'm like, oh, do you want me to ship this back? He's like, no, it's okay. You can have it. And I'm like, I knew you were going to say that. Who else has TC and whoever is going to want some? I yeah. mean, I'll cut. Like, I will <laughs> sit there and cut 10,000 yeah. of that little white sliver, and uh-huh. no one will ever know. But yeah. the, I, he sent me a next batch, so now I got 20,000 papers, and there now my go. goal is to feed 20,000 people. Yes. Um, And so uh, that one came the next day, and so, like, the ones that I have to cut, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait till I have, like, employees to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to do that tedious work, but no. Um, and then the same thing with the business cards when I first started I was like all right well let me I don't know if you've ever felt my business cards but I put a felt uh Mm -hmm. touch to the card so um it's a little expensive but I got my first box of 500 and I was like oh my god like we're starting all right um I'm never gonna hand out 500 cards and then 500 went Mm -hmm. and I'm like all right well let me get a 5,000 and so I put that order in because there was like a deal at the time with Vistaprint and I'm like all right i'm never gonna hand out five thousand a girl i'm on my i have two boxes left and i'm like ah so things that you would never think Mm -hmm. like it's coming like with the papers with the with the business cards it's showing me yeah like what it's happening way too fast like when i see how many boxes i have left or how many papers like of boxes that i have left so i'm like okay maybe i am onto something um, you definitely are yeah and i'm really proud of you oh thank you and i know that we recently met i know but like i feel you like know me immediately yeah like when, i feel like when i we, know you too yeah when we started we, talking i was all wait like our husbands like had to go talk and <laughs> your husband was a prior yes. marine uh-huh yeah so it was mine and i was like she's a marine wife and yeah i'm like i hated the whole like military wife term yeah because Same. i never got along with them not like we would cat fight Same. but i would like be in rooms and hear them talk i'm like no I'm like super tomboyish, so I would play uh, on base at, the, well, we lived on base, and I was working at the gym on base, so I was like, yeah, let's go hoop, I'll open the gym for y'all, wink, wink, and it would be like my husband and like some Marines, and I would be more with the guys, and yeah. you already know like what they say about girls with the guy, yes. but that was like my whole high school, college being with my husband, I'm like, I'm here with my husband, y'all need to chill, yeah. and even sometimes when he's not around, I don't know if you've seen what he looks like, but, you know, some Marines be like, hey, hey, and then another Marine be like, bro, no, no, you don't, you, do you know her husband, her husband, Sergeant Volsey, like, no, yeah. and they're like, oh, okay, who's Sergeant Volsey, and then they'll like, you don't find it. out, they're like, yeah. yeah, and I'm like, mm. yeah, well, yeah, but like, I'm like a super tomboy, I, I, yeah. I just can't do the drama, the cat, like, it's just, like, don't get me wrong. I love the Real Housewife franchise. Like, I'll watch the <laughs> yeah. Real Housewife franchise. And they could fight and they can make themselves look a fool. But because I don't have no friends. So that's the drama in my life where I'm like, well, it's not me. And it's y'all. And then also another reason why I like watching them 
is because they throw these lavish events. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to details, 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 like, like, what can I do for like, yeah. and I love to throw parties. So I, when I first moved back, I started another, well, I started a business called, well, it's my name. My grandma called me Serenita, it calls me Serenita. So I called it Serenita Picnics and Picnics is spelled the French version of picnic. Mm -hmm. And so we do luxury pop-up picnics and balloon decor. Which is beautiful. I've seen yeah. it too. Yeah. So it's re it was really hard and it still is because everyone does balloons. Everyone does pop-up mm -hmm. picnics here um, in San Antonio. So uh, they could, you know, if I, and I, I'll get certain clients here and there with balloons, but like my prices aren't cheap anymore because now you're taking me away from Taco Couture. Mm -hmm. But I also don't do basic balloons. Like I'm very, it's more like designer, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's yeah. not all right, you do um, four quads and a big balloon and then walk away like, nah, I'm very intrigued with the smaller balloons and make it. But, uh, you know, I, I'm still, you know, trying to post on that page with events that I have done, but I love throwing parties. So that's why. <laughs> so like my daughter's second birthday party was in the backyard and I used Taco Couture was her caterer. <laughs> I had a picnic table with um, a happy birthday coloring page. I had another picnic table with sensory play. Oh, I, had I love that. My ball, um, a little pool that I don't use it for my business, but it's mini dip. They're like designer inflatable dip pools. Oh. It's super cute. It's at Target. Like they cute. are super designer. And so I put ball pits in there and. My dad owns a, a table and chair business in Pearsall, which is like an hour away. But I'm like, Dad, uh, for your granddaughter's party, <laughs> she would like to have chairs yeah. and tables. And he has like the nice white ones. Yeah, yeah. So like throwing parties is what I like to do. And, yeah. and you just got to use what you, you have. And yeah. sometimes people don't have that niche of throwing events or parties. That's why they hire people. For me, yeah. I'm like, I am paying if someone were to hit me up with my price of balloons, I'm like, I'm not paying y'all. <laughs> I'm going to do this myself. Like, yeah. for me, it was like, oh, no, always DIY. Like, I love DIY. So, like, during Corona on the military base, I was like, man, they were really strict. But my husband still had to go. It was weird. Yeah. On, on to his job. And then I was home. And I was like, man. And I was still getting paid because I was full-time on a DLD employee um, mm -hmm. at the gym. But... I was like, what do I do? And like, is this what a military wife does and sits around? And I hated that Me too. feeling. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to knock on wood because I would talk so much shit about wives that had uh, one child and three children and didn't do shit. And I, I, don't worry, guys. I got a taste. Yeah. I got a taste. Don't worry. I ate my shit. Yeah. I ate my words. I had my baby. And it's just for me is I can't just sit around. Yeah. And it makes me feel worthless and it makes oh me feel God. like, what the fuck am I? And when I know leaving that base to come to San Antonio to, you know, raise our child, give birth, all yeah. that. Um, I started to feel that because I had nothing. I wasn't going back to my DOD job. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it did give me a year to find another job in the DOD realm. So yeah. my background, all that was clear. So if I wanted to get a job at Fort Sam or Lackland or whatever, um, it would be easier yeah they say but going on usa jobs is not easy at all like yeah. that, oh my god and then now they're starting to message me and text me hey are you still interested in position <laughs> at this base and i'm like i applied for yeah. this like when i gave You're birth all, no yeah. i'm fine trust me mm. yeah no so i <sighs> that worthless feel but oh I, my god the first time i felt that yeah because i'm so used to on the go 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 ground for yourself whatever yes. i got to do to not go back home yes i felt that during the covid so mm -hmm. i was like I, it was so bad where i literally stayed up for more than 24 hours straight it was so bad because i was creating and i was i was binge watching and then my mind was going at 100 where i want i was crying because i wanted to go to sleep but i couldn't yeah like my eyes were so glazed and i would cry to my husband i was like i want to go to sleep he's like go to sleep i was like no like they just i don't know why i just couldn't go down and that happened that happened during the beginning of yeah. covid and I was like, I'm not used to having so much free time. Right. Where, and I'll go to the garage and work out in the garage, but it was, it was, I hated that feeling. Yeah. I was no. like, I need to do something. I feel the I'm meant exact to do something same else. way. I will literally go into depression if I have nothing to do. Like I start yeah, to yeah. like spiral and I, I get really like, like ansias. Like yep. I'm like, I need like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Cause if I'm not, if I'm not working, I'm not moving, I'm not going up. Yeah. I'm yeah. down. Like I'm. 
I'm worthless. Yeah. And I know it's not a good feeling to have and it's not a good it's thing not. to say. It's not. Because <laughs> y'all are worth it. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know your worth. Yes. But I think for us being so like. On the grind all the very time. Very s- yeah. young. Yeah. It's just, it's different and it for makes sure. me feel weak. Yes. No, so, same. But. Same. I mean, I, and then everyone's like, oh, my God, like, how's business with Tapa Couture? I'm like, oh, it's good. It's like, well, we see you everywhere. And I'm like, I feel like I'm not doing it enough. Girl. Uh, w- that one event where they did the tamales, like, uh-huh. I had to drop those off, and we did three back-to-back, and I don't know why I agreed to that, but yeah. we did it. And I was like, yo. Yeah. Didn't go to sleep till, like, n- it was a bad day. But, like, yeah. I still, I took it on because I'm like, they really wanted us, and I still again i always feel like i have to say yes a lot of times yeah. and it's hard for me to say no because again it's not about the money it's about like oh yeah we could like pack down and hit your spot up uh-huh. if you're like and you know we'll let them know hey we have an event right before yours so your serve time might be a little later just work with us and they understand but like for me it's like ooh, like getting in the truck and trying to race and get through traffic like that's a thrill for me yeah it's a- Adrenaline. Uh, yeah. Girl, I'm yeah. still book with us because we'll make it. We'll make it. <laughs> no, I don't want them to be like, yeah, they're unorganized. But mine was just like, all right, I fed y'all's guests. We packed down, clean up, next event. Boom, mm-hmm. same thing, next event. And it's just like, and then when you're done and you're like, that's when it hits you. It's yeah. like when you get home, we're like, me and we've looked at each other, we're like, take take the cart down tomorrow. And we're like, take the cart down yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's get in there. But yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm not doing enough when people are like, no, we see you everywhere. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. I literally get that comment I, yesterday. I was at a networking event and they're like, where are you not? Like yeah. you're everywhere. Yeah. Like I see you everywhere yeah. doing everything. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause I'm like, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's- networking is another yeah. thing. Like I, in my mindset on networking in the very beginning was ugly. It was, I felt like, especially when it comes to like women events, mm. I'm like, those yeah. are harder for me. Honestly. Yeah. Cause I mean, I had my fair, sh- my first taste and I was like, I look back and I'm like, this is high school. Mm. You just see, you could tell, I mean, we're grown w- that they've known each other and it's very clickish. And then you see like a table where they don't know and they're, they're coming into this and then you see it. And I'm like, why am I here? This is not who I am. Yeah. And then, I think the person that changed networking for me was um, Jasmine, the Jasmine Brand. I think that's her last name. She owns her Texas. Okay. Yeah. So when she came to San Antonio, they were messaging me on Instagram. I followed them. I was like, they'll never follow me back. Like they have a community. I just. I think I followed them too. Yeah. And then they followed me back, and they're like, hey, we're interested in. And I was like, me? What? So, they really did. Um, shout out to her texas guys uh so they have a network right so Mm -hmm. you pay a certain price to be a part of their yearly network and you can access other entrepreneurs where hey what can i do for you know piggyback off of each other like hey uh funding this is why no oh snap there's a funding member in the group so for us what you know i sponsored their event like i got a year free nice to, to be in the group or their meetings do i do them no it's it's hard like they'll do like zoom stuff and i'm like i can't sit yeah like, i gotta go like if i sit after the zoom i'm going to sleep yeah <laughs> like i need to be at the gym i need to go like like that's just that's how my mom is and that's how i am and i'm like fuck, this is irritating but i already this is my yeah. life now yep so um but that networking event i like that when they were checking in mm-hmm. it was a free event but you know you rsvp and then you check in and everyone was getting different color bracelets and then you know they start and they introduce like my name is and this is our mission da, da, da. okay everybody that has pink wristbands please move to this table mm-hmm. everyone with green so like nobody knew each other and yeah. i really like that and i have i don't think i had a color wristband because i was like donating the tacos but i was in a suit and a black dress and that's where i met diana from savage coffee yeah 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 so i met her there and um at the table that i was sitting at i got to meet i think she was a heb interior designer Mm -hmm. then i met a ceramic um she does really pretty ceramic art there was an artist that came from i think she's from san francisco and moved to tech san antonio like two years ago yeah and she was sharing that it's really hard for her to showcase her art and working you know so like we were going through all of our struggles and and what yeah. like basically what can i do for you or maybe you know somebody and da, da, da. Yeah. so like it was cool so yeah. that i was like hell yeah like 
to some women like yes. not on some like i ain't telling you or helping you yeah else. we don't gatekeep here yeah um so yeah no i actually want to put together a networking event which i wanted to do in the first quarter but here we are mm -hmm. um but very similar yeah. so like you're not gonna sit with your clique you're not gonna yeah. sit with your friends you're gonna be where i, I put that. you and then y'all are gonna form like something um yeah so we do have to oh, it's no. already been over an Dang. hour i know um i was like i have so much more to tell i know i, I could bring it back girl <laughs> um but yeah so how do people find you and what's something that you have to say to the people of san antonio um you can find me on facebook at taco couture and then on instagram taco.couture not on the website not yet we're still working on that and then what advice what what was it something you want to say to the people of san antonio people of san antonio other than book me um, <laughs> um i mean if you were or family and friends whatever i uh i feel like just just do it <laughs> like just do it like if you're creative which i feel like all people are you just have to like tap into that that mm -hmm. mindset but just do it because you never know it'll if it's your passion like if you're passionate about music that's your thing yeah don't try to get into food when you're passionate about music because then yeah. it just won't you know because then now it just becomes your life like am i was i passionate about food no but i am a foodie so i was like oh let me let me provide an experience to San Antonio. so whatever you're passionate about it and you decide to start your own business or be an entrepreneur, then that's what you should do. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So guys, then thank you so much yeah, for being thank here. You for I definitely me. want to bring you back. Yes. Cause you're going to, you're, I feel like we know each other now. Next yes. time I'll be like dropping my, my yeah. jokes, <laughs> yeah. like the Valley. I don't know if you heard Valley girls go, yes. like that's me. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm trying to be prim and proper. No girl. No. <laughs> um, yes, definitely. I'm going to bring you back. Um, I'd love to have you and i am so excited for you and so thank proud you. of you and just keep killing it thank you um yes guys make sure that you like share follow book yes um taco couture <laughs> i promise you you're gonna love it like the food is fantastic attention to detail is amazing and i'm not just saying that because she's my guest <laughs> i promise you even before i met her um it's fantastic so make sure that you do that um again thank you to watching or thank you to you guys for watching or listening uh, make sure that you like and subscribe and do all that thing follow me at, under uh, norteño c10 under everything or just look for me natasha gonzalez you'll find me <laughs> um but yes thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time bye Can't bowl this yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're grabbing me in girl <laughs>